In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use adjustment layers in Photoshop. Layers are one of Photoshop's most powerful features. They allow you to do all of your editing in a, a virtual layer above the original image so that everything that you do is non-destructive, meaning that you're not actually altering the original photograph. You're just um, you're doing the edits in a uh, sort of an imaginary layer above them that Photoshop interprets to show on the screen or in your print when you print it. And that way, in the future, if you decide that you don't like something that you've done to the picture, you can delete the layer, or you can, you can change the layer without having ever changed the original image underneath. If you look over here on the right side of the screen in the Layers palette, where I've got the cursor circling here, you'll see it says Background. That's the default layer that all photographs start with. That's your original image. And everything else that you do goes on top of the background. Um, there's different types of layers, but the one we're going to work on now is called adjustment layers. And these are layers that let you do things like curves adjustments, or levels adjustments, or color balance adjustments. If you go down to the bottom of the layers palette, there's this little button here that looks like a circle that's half black and half white. That's the create new adjustment layer button. You click that with your mouse, and you see a list of possible adjustment layers that you can choose from. Um, you got levels, curves, hue and saturation, color balance, conversion to black and white. Um, invert turns the picture into a negative. Um, this is useful if you scan film that's a negative. If you scan it, it's transparency to look like a negative, and then you can use the invert to turn it back positive. Um, what we're going to use today, though, for this photograph, because this, this is a digital photograph in color, so we're going to use the uh, curves adjustments to start with because I think that this picture is a little bit too flat and needs a little bit more contrast. So we're going to add that with curves. So I'll go ahead and choose curves here. And you'll see that a new layer has appeared called curves 1. If you do more than one curves layer, they'll be numbered 1 through however many you do. Um, up above here now we see the adjustment palette that shows the curves dialog box. And we can then make our adjustments to the curves here. And if you're not sure how to use curves, I do have a tutorial on curves on my website on CrawfordPhotoSchool.com that you can read that explains exactly how curves work and how to get the most out of this um, this tool. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the contrast a bit here. That's, uh, that's a little too far, I think. Let's back it off a bit. Um, now it looks a little bit maybe a little bit too dark, so we can do another curves adjustment layer. Back to the new adjustment layer button, choose curves again, get a new curves here that we can work on, and I'll lighten that up a bit. I think that looks pretty good like that. Now, if you look in the curves palette, or the layers palette, I mean, you'll see that we now have the two curves. Now, if you decide that, you know, wait a minute, I don't like these, I, I like the picture the way it was before. You can actually um, you can turn a curves adjustment layer on or off by clicking on the little eyeball next to the next to the name. So if we click the eyeball here, we turn off the one that I just lightened the picture with. If we want to turn it back on, click the space again, the eyeball reappears, and our layer is back in place. Um, you can do that with any layer, not just the one that's on the top too. If you turn the background layer off, then you see you have nothing because the background layer is your picture. So that we usually don't want to turn off. Um, now, if you've uh, if you've decided that you absolutely don't want the layer there at all, you don't just want to turn it off. You want it completely gone. You can do that if you grab the uh, if you grab the layer tile for the one you want to delete, and click and drag it down to the little trash can down here. It's gone. Um, And I actually want to bring that back because I don't want to delete that, so I'm going to use the undo command. Undo delete layer, and it comes back. Um, one thing that's really wonderful about curves, or about the um, adjustment layers, and th this is whether you use curves or levels or whatever, is that after you save the, fo after you save the file, you can open it back up later on, and you can still delete or add curves to it. So even something you've done in the past you can get rid of. You, you could reopen the file ten years later and you can still adjust these curves. Um, something you can do too, in addition to simply turning the curves on and off or deleting them, 
you can also go back to one that you've already created and you can you can change the actual adjustment that was done with it. If you uh, let's go back down to our curves one here, the one that we did the increase in contrast. When you click on the name of the curve, you'll see that the curves dialog box up here changes to show the actual adjustments you did. So you can go back to a, an adjustment layer and you can see the adjustments and you can actually change those adjustments. We'll back the contrast off a little bit here. And so we've gone in and we've actually gone back and redone or altered a previous adjustment. And this is something you cannot do any other way. You have to use adjustment layers for this. If you were to do a curves adjustment um, on the original file without using the layers, you cannot go back later and change the amount of the curve that you put into it. It's, it's basically baked into the, into the file. You've altered the original image. And by using the curves, we're not damaging or changing or altering the original image in any way. If we want to get back to where we started, we can always turn off or delete the layers and we're back to our original, the image that we first opened. Um, that's why I like this so much because you can you have so much control over it. Nothing is ever permanent. You can you can make a change and as I said before, you can go back years later and make a change to it if you decide you don't like how it looks. Um, you can do a lot of different things with these too. It's not just curves as I showed you earlier. You have you can do levels, you can do brightness contrast, uh, hue and saturation, um, you can convert to black and white, you click on that then the picture turns black and white and you have your adjustments here for that. I don't particularly like to do this in Photoshop because I don't think that Photoshop's built-in black and white conversion is very good. I use a plug-in for it, but that's a, a possibility. And one thing that's nice about that is if you do convert an image to black and white this way, you can always go back to the original color image by either turning it off or deleting the layer altogether as I've done here. Something else you can do with adjustment layers too is that you can use them for dodging and burning, which dodging and burning is a term that we used in the darkroom that is for if you have an area of a picture that you want to lighten or darken without affecting the rest of the picture, that's what dodging and burning is. Dodging is, is when you lighten an area and burning is when you darken an area. And you can use adjustment layers for this, uh, which is really nice because if you do any dodging and burning with adjustment layers, you can go back and you can change them or delete them later if you do, if you decide that you that you change something you don't want to change. Um, that gets a little bit more too that gets a little bit too involved for this video, so I'm going to do that in a separate tutorial. And I actually have a written version of it on my website that you can read, and I'm going to do a video version of it later. Um, so for right now, this is the basics of how adjustment layers work. You can create the layers, you can make the adjustments you want to them, you can save the file, and then later on you can open it back up and you can you can alter the adjustment layers you did in the past, or you can get rid of them, or you can add to them. Uh, when you save a file that you've added layers to, you cannot, save it, you cannot save it as a JPEG. JPEGs don't support layers. You have to save it either as a TIFF file or as a PSD file. PSD being, being the Photoshop native file format. Either one is, will work, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, I always use the PSD files because a TIFF file with layers is a lot bigger, takes up more hard drive space than a PSD file does. And the PSD file is not, um, it's not lower quality. It's not like a JPEG where, the, where it uses compression that lowers image quality. So the PSD file gives you a smaller file with no penalty, and that's why I prefer to use that. If you do save it like that as a PSD or a TIFF, then you can open up the file later and the layers will still be there. If you were to save this as a JPEG, the layers would disappear. Um, Photoshop would basically um, take all the changes you did in the layers and incorporate them into the final file, but make it so that the layers aren't there for you to edit anymore. Um, if you go up into the menu bar at the top here where it says layer, um, you, can, you can do new, um, new adjustment layers from up here too, but I just prefer to use the layer palette for it because it's so much simpler to find it. But there is one control down here at the bottom that is useful sometimes. There may be times when you when you don't want the layers to still be in the file. Um, for example, if you've got a, a picture that you're going to send to a client, they don't need to see all the layers. They just want the final perfect image. Um, you can set you can hit flatten image here, and that that eliminates the layers while keeping the adjustments you did. So the adjustments that you did in the layers are basically finalized into the the original image. 
Now, when I do this, I always save the original image as a PSD file with the layers and keep that as an archive file so that I can go back to it later if I need to. And then I flatten the image and save it under a new file name before I send it off to the client. That way I'm still keeping my original layered file for myself. I'm going to go back here and undo that because I still want my layers so that I can save this, but that's the basics of how adjustment layers work. They give you a tremendous amount of freedom to work on your picture and to go back later and alter things again without doing any changes to the actual original file underneath. You could have 50, 50 layers or 100 layers on here if you're you know, obsessive and compulsive enough to make that many changes to a picture, and the original background image has never changed. So I think this is one of the most powerful features that Photoshop has, and it's something that I think is essential for any photographer who does digital imaging work or who does, um, who does digital work on scanned film to know. Um, I have other tutorials on my website that are related to this. I have one on dodging and burning with adjustment layers, and uh, I have one on how curves work, for those of you who need to know, who need to know that, because curves, I think, are... To me, curves are the best... They're the best way that you can that you can alter a picture as far as changing its contrast or its brightness or its color balance. They give you a lot more control than what you get using the layers command or using the brightness and contrast or exposure commands. So I think that's an essential thing for you to study as well.